Hey everyone, and welcome to WordPress for Designers, day two on ThemeForest.net. And today we're going to go over a few things. Uh, first, we're going to cover the WordPress admin panel and getting more familiar with it and, and just really getting to know the back end of WordPress and, and how we man manage and navigate the dashboard. Because you'll find that the more comfortable you get with, with the back end of WordPress and the admin panel, the more efficient and uh, quick you'll be able to develop your themes, which is definitely a good thing. And the second thing we're going to cover is WordPress template files. And we're going to go over uh, exactly what are WordPress template files, what do they do, what purpose do they serve, and how are we going to use these as the building blocks of our theme. Because one thing that's very important to understand about WordPress is when, when it comes to theme development is that WordPress template files are essentially the files that we're going to be working with for 90% of the time um, during this series. So it's very important to get to know more about WordPress template files. And we're going to take it really slow for these next few uh, video screencasts just to make sure that anybody that's new to WordPress or that's a beginner at this sort of thing really gets a, a good start and a solid foundation um, so no one gets lost down the road when we, when we really dive into some theme development. That said, I want to go over a few things from day one that I feel that I need to clarify or go over and give you guys a few more resources that I really should have in the first one. Um, the first thing, we'll, we'll close Coda here, and, the, and we'll open up Firefox. And you'll remember on on day one, we, we uh, installed uh, MAMP, or MAMP as I was calling it, which was just a local server for Mac. And I told, uh, I said that, told most of you that uh, Windows and Linux, it was very easy to do this on, on Windows and Linux as well. But I didn't really give you a resource to get started there when I really should have, so I apologize about that and I'm going to give you one now. So unfortunately we're going to have to leave AOL uh, just for the time being, we'll come back. But we're going to go to apachefriends.org. And once you go to apachefriends.org, you should see a home page that looks similar to this. And you'll see a button that says XAMPP. We'll go ahead and click on that. Okay, now XAMPP is an open source Apache web server for uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac. Although I believe that Mac is in, still in beta. But it's an open source Apache web server for Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac. And it comes with everything you need, just like we did in day one. Apache, MySQL, PHP, and uh, Perl as well. And you can just download them and get started by clicking on these links right here. And uh, that should get you started and on your way if, um, if you're a Linux or Windows guy. And if you need more help, there's also a nice little video and installation guide right down here. So hopefully um, you shouldn't have any problems with that. And I'm sorry for not mentioning that in the first one, but that, that is for all you Linux and Windows people there that are looking for a free open source uh, web server to develop on. Uh, XAMPP is a, uh, is a nice one to have. Uh, in addition, I wanted to, I'm going to go back to Coda here. Oops. Why don't you go ahead and open up wp-config.php, and that will be in the root of your WordPress folder. It's uh, wp-config.php. And in day one, I, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I completely forgot to fill in the unique phrases for our uh, WordPress database file. So make sure you go back in here and, and scroll down to here where it says authentic, authentic, oh, excuse me, authentication unique keys and uh, fill out the unique keys. Uh, you can make your own mumbo jumbo up um, or go to this URL right here and get your own key but whatever you do just make sure you have a good mix of lowercase and uppercase <clears throat> letters and numbers as that will help us avoid any road bumps uh, in the future and that is all I really wanted to cover from day one hope I didn't leave anything out but I think that's it and we're gonna go ahead and jump right into the WordPress admin panel so once again we'll open up Firefox and if you remember, we were on localhost colon 8888 slash WordPress. And that's because we are on port 8888. So that's localhost colon 8888 
slash WordPress. And if, if you were following along in day one, that will look familiar to you. So we can see our, our default theme here, and it's not too pretty, but we're going to dive into that uh, later on in this series, and we'll get a custom PSD uh, from scratch coded into a nice little WordPress theme. But for now, let's scroll to the bottom, and under Meta, click on Site Admin. Okay, now this is the WordPress dashboard, or the WordPress admin panel. This is kind of your... Uh, your command center of WordPress. And this is where you'll be able to really do pretty much everything that you'll need to do and edit with your theme um, from the admin panel if you if you like. And what we're going to do is just go over some of the basic uh, of navigating this and, and kind of what everything does here because if you've never worked with WordPress before this can be, this can be a pretty confusing and, and just an overwhelming amount of options even though it's pretty nicely set up. Okay, so starting with just at a glance, you can see it's a summary of your posts and pages, your categories, any comments or tags you have, and just kind of gives you a rough estimate of your numbers. Quick Press is going to be great for any of you that are, uh, are really passionate writers or are constantly pu publishing posts. Uh, if you're writing more than two posts a day, you'll probably be using Quick Press to just quickly log into the admin panel and, uh, and get that content out there. Uh, you'll notice recent comments and recent drafts. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Incoming links will track any links coming into your WordPress website. Um, down here under plugins, you will have uh, a list of popular and recommended plugins that we'll cover uh, in a few weeks or so, a few series, excuse me, or so. We'll cover some plugins. But the main part of the navigating the amend panel is this left-hand sidebar here where you'll see a ton of options. And the first thing I like to do, I just like a really clean workspace, so I like to close all of these little arrow uh, navigation keys up. So I have a fresh palette to start with, kind of to speak. So if we, if we click the arrow on post, we see we have the option to edit, add new, uh, alter our tags, and add some categories. And you might be asking, well, what is a post? And what is a page? Because that's one of the most frequently asked questions on the WordPress uh, support forums for people that have never written or used WordPress before is what is a post and what uh, constitutes a page? And to show you, I'll, I'll just pull up uh, my website real quick. And you will see all of these that are listed here, uh, the little article snippets are posts. So you can, if it helps, you can think of posts as kind of individual articles that, that usually would appear on the front page. Now a page is just what it implies, a static page. So a good example of a page is a contact page. As this won't change very often unless you need to make subtle changes to it. So help think of a, a post as an article and a page is just a static, non-changing web page. If, if that helps you uh, identify more the difference between a post and a page. So that is where you can edit and, and start writing your posts. We'll get more into writing later. Media would be audio and flash, and we're not going to cover We're not going to worry about that right now. Links, you've probably seen on a lot of um, blogs and websites nowadays, the, the, bro the blog role and, and the friends section where they have a list of, uh, of their links and their friends and this is where you can manage any links you have and link categories you like. It's pretty straightforward. Pages, as we just explained, are static pages on your blog such as like a contact or an about page are great examples of a, of a static page in WordPress. Comments. Now appearance. Appearance is the one that we will probably using the most and that we're going to focus on right now. And under appearance you'll notice themes, which I'm going to go ahead and open. And you can see this is where you can install and activate new themes. You can go down to appearance again and you see widgets. And this is where you would enable any widgets like calendar, uh, tag cloud, RSS feed, and this is all always assuming that the 
theme you're using is widget compatible. But if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. We will cover that. Now the editor is what we really want to focus on right now. The appearance editor holds all of your themes template files. And this is what we've been working up to today. Our WordPress theme template files, what are they? Well, if it helps to think of WordPress theme template files as, as Legos, as all individual Legos, and when we put them together, we will have our, our uh, all-in-one, our congealed uh, website and WordPress theme. So all of these individual uh, WordPress temp template files that you see here, they're all going to work together with each other and stay separate of one another so to allow us a lot of flexibility and and uh, allow us to do a lot of cool things with our theme. So I think the best way to really understand how template files work is just to start looking at a few of them and examining the contents and I'll try to go really slowly over this and keep it as simple as possible because tomorrow we're really just gonna kinda start from a blank canvas and and start coding these template files and, and uh, theme files ourselves. But, but to get an idea of, of what template files do, let's open up the first one, a 404 template. Now what do you think a 404 template is going to do? Well it's probably going to be the page or file that is called whenever there is a 404 server error, which is a, a page not found error on your website. In case you didn't know, WordPress automatically redirects any not found uh, errors on your website to, to your custom 404 template. So here's our 404 template file. You see at the very top of it we have this strange PHP call that says get header. Now what exactly is header and, and what is get header? We'll worry about that in just a second. Now we have some just regular HTML that we could edit and mess with and right now it just says arrow 404 not found so we'll leave that as it be and then we have that again the get sidebar and get footer so we know that somehow that there's a header a sidebar and a footer involved in this 404 template and that is where you can really start to see how template files work so we see get header now if we look over to the right we'll notice that we actually have a header.php file so what WordPress is doing is saying, hey, WordPress, when, <laughs> that's how WordPress talks too, it says, hey, WordPress, when the 404 page is called, get the header.php file and insert it into this, this page, call it into this page. So let's click on header PHP to get a better understanding of what that means. Okay, well, when we look at header.php, we can see that right away we have a doc type. So we know this is probably going to be the very beginning of of our document. So we're probably going to be calling header pretty often. Header also contains our meta tags, our title tags, which we'll get into later, uh, our style sheets, any scripts that we would want to include, unless you're going to include them um, at the bottom of your page. Any um, logos are usually found in the header, so you can see our, our logo and header are found, um, are found in the header.php file. So the header.php file is a lot like what it sounds like. It, it contains all of your your uh, info for the beginning of your of your web page. So here we can see WordPress making the call, get header inside PHP tags, and it's saying get the header.php file. So everything in header.php is now going to you know be inserted above div ID of content. Okay. Well, what about get sidebar down here? Well, if we look to the right, we can also see sidebar.php. Click on that, and we'll also see all kinds of uh, our sidebar information in HTML, which we won't worry about now, but, but we'll see our sidebar. So we're calling the sidebar after our content on the 404 page. And lastly, you'll remember that in our header, the HTML body tag was opened, but we haven't gotten a chance to close it yet. But down here we make a call to get footer, and we can take a wild guess what that does. It calls footer.php, which is going to you know, wrap everything up with our HTML and, and provide our, our footer. So uh, uh, you'll see your, your blog copyright information, and then right here we'll close the body in the HTML tag. So you should start to be able to kind of see how 
template files are interacting with each other. And if, and if we just read some of these, we'll notice that we have a lot of separate ones. Like, uh, we have comments, we have a page template, we have search results, a single post, and, and we're going to get all into, uh, into all of these and, and create them from scratch ourselves tomorrow. But, but think of template files as all as, as, uh, as Legos, as individual Legos is, is just how I like to think of them. And, and you, we, we're going to pull them all together to create our WordPress theme. So go over the template, uh, the appearance editor, go ahead and log into WordPress and then go into the appearance editor and just go through some of these and see, see what you can see what's going on. So if you click on archives, you'll see another call to get header. So you'll start to realize that the header is probably one of the first things, one of the first template files we need to be calling when we need any kind of document type or CSS files and, and things of that nature. And just start looking through these. Uh, don't be intimidated by all the links because we'll get real familiar with them. And just see what you can figure out and, and what you notice. And, uh, and try to keep that in mind for day three because we're really uh, we're going to jump in with a, with, a, with a blank canvas and start creating our own files. And the last thing I want to go over here is how do you find your theme files in your WordPress folder? I mean, if you've never worked with WordPress before, you might not even know where these are. So let's say you open WordPress like I have in your text editor. You can scroll to WP Content, which stands for WordPress Content. You'll see Plugins and Themes. Open up Themes. Then it will be a list of your themes installed on your server. You see Default, and that's the one we're currently using. When we open up Default, we'll notice all of those template files that we just checked out in the editor are now showing up here. And so again, to find any of your all of your theme files are always going to be located in WP content themes and then the name of your theme, that folder. So if you prefer to work in a text editor like Coda, you can certainly just editor or, excuse me, you can certainly edit all of your files from your text editor as well. Whichever one works for you. I really recommend kind of especially if you're new to WordPress, get, get more involved with the, the admin panel and really get to know how it works because it will really pay off uh, in the future here. And um, we, we are done with day two, so I guess we can, we can go back to Awesomeness AOL and, and check out some of that. And, and then we'll pick up with day three with, uh, with Blank Canvas and start to actually get into some code. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments section. Uh, we'll get to them as soon as possible. The community here has just been awesome uh, anyway, so someone will probably get to it before Jeff and I have a chance to. So stay tuned for day three, and have a great day.